I was watching YouTube uh, probably a week or two ago, and I saw that Sammy from Unicorn Dust Designs was making pumpkins out of these uh, thread rolls here. I don't know exactly what you call them, but I went to Goodwill like a few days after that, after seeing her video, and I found these $3 for four of these nice big uh, thread rolls, and I love the color of them. They're a natural color and beautiful. So those are the big ones. And then I found another bag. It was red tag, so 50% off red tag. So this was only a dollar for all these. And so I purchased that, of course, and decided that I would try my own touch to it. But I thought I would try doing that, making more natural pumpkins. I will be using these purple ones a little bit later on in the video, and I'll show you how to keep their shape, but to cover up the color. So for $4, I got all these cool pumpkins. We're going to take these guys out, and we're going to make some natural pumpkins with these. I've cut a bunch of spindles down, different sizes and shapes I didn't I wasn't I didn't get too crazy about um, what they look like but anyway they're just little chair back spindles I think is what they came off from I'm gonna take this packing paper which is really noisy when I start crinkling it up but I'm gonna take little pieces of this and I'm gonna stuff it down in there so that when I put my spindle down in to make my stem it's gonna stand stand up in there a little bit better and I'll give it a little bit of glue so that it will stick in there really well. And I may, I think, yeah, I may like just kind of open the holes up a little bit so that I can really get in there because I also want to put in some Spanish moss around it and then I'll decorate. I brought up a bunch of stuff out of my, my uh, flower stash that I have down there. So I've got all this stuff that I can use uh, on these with these what I do is I take the paper and I stuff it down with my finger down inside and kind of make a well so I'm filling in the outside kind of like a pillow I'm filling in the edges as much as I possibly can and leaving a little well inside there I don't know if you can really see it's kind of dark but um and I just use my finger to push it up against the sides if I need a little bit more on this side so I'll put a little bit in there it's just to give it a little bit of a a cushion so that when I stick this in it'll have something to, to glue to or stick to I mean you don't have to stick them in but there's a spot in here that needs some so that it will be touching and we'll hold this down so it won't just be flopping around and I can glue it in like I said I'm also going to use some Spanish moss and I'm going to tuck it in around there so and glue that in so that should work pretty good too All right, they're all stuffed. They're all glued with their stems and they are adorable, don't you think? Just like this, so cute. But we've got to close up this hole, cover up the paper that's in there. So, but first I'm gonna take some Waverly Antique Wax and I haven't painted these. I'm gonna keep them natural, but the tops where I cut them, see how they have that, that cut look? So I'm just gonna take a little bit of antique wax try not to drip it on my pumpkins and put those on the top you know just a little on the top so it just doesn't stand out whoops a little fuzz a little fuzz on there okay and we're just gonna give them a little bit
like so on all of them, but I'll just do a few to show you and then just wipe it back. And that looks much better. It blends in much better. Now I have these a little bit tall because I am going to add Spanish moss. I'm gonna add a few flowers, some oh, raffia, um, just, I don't know, all kinds of stuff. So I wanna be able to still see the stem, but still decorate around it. And why not? I mean, heck, let's just go all out and make some really cool stems. We're gonna start stuffing the pumpkin hole here with Spanish moss. That again is gonna help that stem, keep it from wiggling around a little bit. And of course it looks really rustic and cool. Add a little bit of glue around the top and then stick some more on there. So see how it just takes up a lot of that stem as you build it up? So, and I wanted to see it, so. Now if my granddaughter was here, she would trim the heck out of this hair. She was like, I gotta trim the hair, but I like it. I like it a little bit crazy. I love, love and hate Spanish moss. I love it because I love the look it gives, but I don't like it because of the mess. But I like that. I added some Sweet Annie, as you saw, to my pretty little decoration, and also a twine bow, and I'm just taking the ends and fraying them out, just untwisting them, so it just gives it something different to look at, and I think my little pumpkin is done. Well, these purple ones that came out of that bag with the other ones I wasn't real excited about. Then I was like, I don't have to keep them the way they are. I can cover them. So I grabbed some homespun material that I had and I thought I would repurpose the spools and re upcycle them into something a little bit more primitive. I'm just taking this material and I'm going to basically wrap it up and tuck in those edges and make them have some really cool creases there. And I don't know, it just gives it a cool look. It almost looks like an apple to me, but these are gonna be little pumpkins because they're gonna have stems too. And I'm gonna decorate the tops. These stems are left over from the mold pumpkins that I did with my granddaughter a week or so ago. I did a video on it and I'll link that down in the description for you to check out if you haven't seen it. Super cute uh, how we made those. And so we had a few of these sticks left over so I thought I would use them in these little pumpkins or they're kind of, again, looking like apples to me. So let me know down in the comments do they look like apples or pumpkins to you. Either way, it's very fall and primitive, so 
we're going to go with it. So again, just adding a little bit of glue and some Spanish moss, my favorite stuff to work with. Uh, not when it gets messy, but you know, you just got to do what you got to do. So I'm just going to glue that all around both stems and then gonna, I'm going to start decorating. Very simple decorating with these because they're much smaller. So I don't want to put too much on there to overwhelm the cuteness of them. This rolling pin was a thrift store pickup and I thought for $1.50 it was a great deal. And I found this print printout on Honeybee Printables on Etsy. I'll leave a link down in the description. She has several really cute different designs for Halloween and fall. Now I sprayed it because it is from just on printer paper from my printer. I sprayed it with my clear Rust-Oleum matte spray to give it a seal so if I had any water hit it or the Mod Podge, it wouldn't uh, run the colors. So that definitely helps. I know uh, other people have used hairspray and that works as well. So I'm just going to fit it onto my rolling pin and see how it looks. I like it, but I don't like the nice clean look on it. So I think I'm going to go ahead and uh, fray the edges a little bit or kind of rip the edges, tear them down to give them an organic look. First, I'm going to paint the handles with my mustard paint, just the handles and around the ends as well, just to give it a, a cool look. Now that I have the edges frayed, it's time to Mod Podge my paper down to my rolling pin. And I forgot that I wanted to leave a little room at the top to when I went around with the paper to tuck the bottom into the top. And I forgot all about doing that. So when I put it on, I started with the very top, just like I normally do, and totally spaced it on leaving some room. But that's okay. Uh, live and learn and next time I will make sure that I don't do that because my paper is thick as I put my Mod Podge on and put the paper over it it does wrinkle a little bit so you kind of have to go back and just roll your fingers over it and because it's thicker also it's it takes a little bit more as far as rubbing back and forth on it so it won't uh, rip as easily but once it gets really wet with the Mod Podge it will rip some so you want to make sure that you're you're careful with that I did rip the edge there a little bit because I was trying to get that bottom to go underneath the top once I got as many wrinkles as I could I took my Mod Podge and did a seal coat over the top of the whole middle part. I sanded down the handles so that when I added my antique wax it would sit down in those spots that I had sanded down and it also darkens up that mustard paint and gives it a really cool rustic look. I also did the edges around where I had ripped the paper and I thought that was going to be good enough for me but I really didn't like how that looked. So I'll show you how it turned out with just the antique wax to stain the edges and then um, show you what I did to fix it.
I decided to paint around the edges with the mustard paint just like I did on the handles and then I'm going to go back and take my antique wax once that's dry and I'm going to cover it with antique wax to make it have a dark look like the handles do. I also go around the edges with a little bit of black paint once everything's done just to give it some more of a rustic touch. This cool Halloween, fall and Halloween decor collaboration is put on by Shabby Meets Bling and The Secret Craft Room and several other creators that will be joining in. So make sure that you check out the collab link down in the description and the hosts channels as well. If you enjoyed my projects today let me know down in the comments if you had a favorite we still have craft kits available on my etsy shop along with these projects in this video and several other projects as well thank you for watching have a great day